Rotating mounting, an assembly exercise example using bearings. So in this example, we're looking at an assembly, assembly question and we want to assemble all the parts given into a final assembled component. Now the question for this specific assembly was to have three views, an external principal view, a right section view through the center of this shaft and a top external view for, for the main component. Okay, so when we are starting with this, it's important that we first identify which of these components belong to each other. Remember when these components are drawn on the sheet, they are drawn in orthographic pairs. So you might have more than one, two or three uh, views of each of these components. So if we look at this, we can see that this part of the component, that's one because we have two views. And how do we know this? If we orthographically look at them, we can see they line up and nothing lines up in this direction. So these two are two views of the same component. Then we have this, which we can identify as a castle nut from our standard components. We have these two that are together. We have this bearing also identified from standard components. And then we have these three views that show us three views of a single component. And you can see they all line up orthographically. So these are the components that we have. So that's the first step. We identify how many components we have. The second step here will be to identify if there are standard components that we can see, we need to add here. So we've already been given a castle nut. So typically they could have also left the castle nut out. And if this wasn't there, how would we know that we need to use or can use a castle nut? If you look, for example, at this small little hole in the shaft, that is typically an indication that we can use a castle nut because the nut will be bolted onto this part of the shaft and a split pin will need to go through that hole. Okay, so in this assembly, what is not actually shown is a split pin. But we know when we have a castle nut, we have a split pin that combines to that. If this is news to you and you've not seen this or heard this before, I strongly suggest you look at the tutorial for standard components, specifically with the castle nut and split pin assemblies. Okay, so where do we start? We can start anywhere. The main thing to know is to start with the external view. Uh, that has a section through it. Okay, so you're not going to start with just a normal view. We want to do specifically something that has a section. And in this case, that would be the right view. Okay, the right view that is in section, we can start anywhere in terms of that. We can start with this. We can start with the housing. But if we look at how these three views would look, we know that the principal view will be in this form. Now, this is actually given to you in a section form. But the principal view in the question is asked to be of the outside of this. And we are asked to show the right hand in section. Okay. So be mindful when we are drawing that we want to have the right hand in section here. And if we are drawing the right hand in section, we want to also make sure if this orientation is correct. Is this truly the right hand view? Now in this question, we have to look at what has been given here. The question has actually been given in first angle. Now this is an old example, which means they still gave the drawing in first angle, and we will always give you the drawing in third angle. But for this case, just pay attention. The reason I'm going to turn this around is because this view is not the right view of this, but it's in first angle, so it's showing actually the, the view on the other side. So the right view would look exactly like this, just swapped around. So this little wing will be on that side. Okay. And the reason I'm turning them around is because it's drawn in first angle, not in third angle. Okay. So when I'm looking at the right hand view that I need to do a section view of, I can start, let's start with this simple, uh, this simple part and just draw this in section. So remember what I said, I'm going to draw that part and I'm going to draw it in the opposite direction, making sure that I have all the parts that I need. 
all the details that I need. So you can see there are rounded corners here all around. So making sure that when I'm drawing it, I have my rounded corners top and at the bottom. I know that I see this is going to happen on the inside. So I can actually draw all of that in on the inside. Let's just first get the outside shape. Can you see there's a sharp, sharp corner here? So this corner will be sharp. This corner is also sharp. Sharp. And all the way at the top, that is a rounded corner. So very important in terms of your technical uh, correctness of this drawing to make rounded corners where it's needed and sharp corners where it's needed. And that's nothing to think about. It's literally just redrawing properly from the drawing that you have. Okay, so what we'll do next is draw in the detail that I see that's happening here as well as here. So on this wing I see the hidden detail here gives me an indication of what this is going to look like. So I have that. Now remember I'm cutting right through the center of this component so I'll actually see this. This part I'll actually now visually see. So I can section that part. I know this is a circle so I can put my center line in there already and this part is also going to be sectioned but let me just first fill in what I know is happening here. All the detail of this inside is given to me by this. I have a center line here through the middle. It might be easier for you to draw first the center line and now we're going to draw in the rest. Okay, So approximately the outside width is like this and you want to proportionally draw in these 15, 24, all the way down. So as far as is possible, we're not using a ruler. We're just estimating how deep these run through. So can you see that I'm making this first 15 bend before the end of this? Because I know that this part is 20. So this 15 must end before that. So then I have 15. I come further down for the 20. So 20 is longer than 15, so it has to be slightly longer than that first bit. Then I have a very small step here. And then I have this part that comes in before it has this diagonal that runs out. Okay, and so I can section this whole outside part. Because now I know I've cut through the central part and from here I'll just fill in all the details. Okay, so that's the housing first. Now I need to say what is going to fit into this housing. So if we go through the components that we have, we can start looking at how these components logically connect. Now in this example specifically, there's no schematic to guide us and typically you would have a schematic to guide you. But let's see, if we don't have a schematic, how can we do it now? So we know we've started with the housing. And in the housing, there's a couple of dimensions that we see here. There's diameter 80, diameter 68, 60, and 32. And we have an angle here of 70. That's something new. And we have specific distances that run down here. But let's see if we can first match these diameters to some of our other components. And you can go sequentially through all of them, starting, for example, on one side, or it doesn't matter where you start, you just want to check all of them. So here we see we have a diameter 60, which does match to diameter 60 that we have over there. So that potentially means that this will fit in there. In terms of the height, this is 21, but I'm not really restricted here in terms of height. I have an open space, so nothing necessary to say at this stage about this 21. Next, if I go to the next one, I see that here I have a diameter 78. Now, I can't match an exact 78 at the top, but something slightly smaller, 80. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's an exact match, but there is something smaller. And the same with the bottom diameter here, it's slightly smaller than this 68. So I have 78, which is too smaller than 80, and 66, which is too smaller than 68, which could mean that they have something in common. Then I have my castle net, which I know will go around this part. And how does this part fit into the equation? Here I see this angle of 70 
So I can see the 70 angle matching. And I can see the diameter of this is 30, where the diameter of this is 32. So M30 is close to M32. So it's not an exact fit, but it might mean that there's just spacing around that component. Okay, so I have an indication of this might fit into there. Because I think that these two will fit into these, will this fit through the middle? I see they have an inner diameter of 30 here and an inner diameter of 30 here, and these two are the same as that. So they might be an exact fit on top of each other. Now remember, when I have a bearing, I want to close the bearing off so it's not exposed to outside, uh, to anything on the outside like that can cause dirt to come into this bearing. So typically when I have a bearing, I have some kind of top part to cover that up. And this could be just the lid that covers that part up. Okay, so let's see if that understanding of the standard components make any sense. What I can see is these two can fit around there, the carcinite can fit on top and I can fix them all together. How will these two fit? First I'll have the bearing, then I'll have the lid because I don't want the bearing to be outside and exposed to the environment. Okay, so if I have the bearing first, it will mean that it needs to fit into my housing first. And will that work? I have a 60 diameter here. And yes, the bottom part here is 60 diameter thick, uh, wide. So I, I can do that and then it's 21 high. So it can go through this little step, that's four, and up so it's slightly below that point because